What's going on, everybody? It's Josh Wilson, and we are in the Big Dog Podcast studio. Got my guy Jonathan Mack in here with me. What's up, Jonathan? Nothing much. Just hanging out on this unbelievably humid day. Bro, what did you do? You just walked outside with a camera, and it completely fogged over? Yeah, it freaked It freaked out. I was confused for a second, because I was like, why is my screen all white? My exposure isn't that high. And then I looked at the lens, and I was like, it looks like a bathroom mirror. Man. Look, I apologize for my voice, everybody. It's, I don't know, something's going on. Sounds crazy. It sounds, it sounds crazy. Apparently, whatever's going on is giving me a uh, speech impediment. Yeah. So. Again, the humidity. Yeah. Damn it, it is the humidity. It is the humidity, Jonathan. Oh, my gosh. Maybe I have a medical condition I'm unaware of. So, anyway, wanted to talk real quick about growth, um, you know, scaling from from where you're at. So I'm, I'm talking to our business owners out there, small business owners, our solopreneurs, if you will, and they're they're kind of finding themselves – wherever they're at currently in their journey in their path but they're finding themselves maxed out it's like man i've been at this point for a while i'm trying all these different things but i cannot make that that jump forget jump jump might even be too aggressive i can't even get one more step ahead because there's just no more of me right because there's only so much any individual i don't care how talented they are skilled they are there's only so much any one individual can do. And so, you know, kind of taking that next step in order to pr- position yourself to make that big jump down the road. And we are, we are traveling last week or two weeks ago, I guess now at this point, um, we went on that 40th birthday party, went to Italy for a friend of ours, my God, my godson's mom, uh, Kelly, her 40th birthday. So two years ago, um, you know, she had planned this COVID screwed it all up. So we couldn't go the next summer. We were going to go COVID screwed it all up. Couldn't go. So finally three summers later, we all make the trip. And so we go to Italy and we're in the airport and we don't have a lot of time with the connection in Paris, but while we're making this connection, it got me laughing about the circumstance we found ourselves in and applying it to business and I was like, as I'm running through the airport in Paris, chasing this um, little Chinese girl, and I'm not chasing just some random Chinese girl. It was a, a employee for the company. She was there as a, now the, the way this setup is going to be messed up if I call her an escort. I'm really screwing this up, Jonathan. We hired someone in Paris to help get us from our arriving flight to our connecting flight because we had a very small window of time. And if you've never been to Crap de Gaulle Airport, and it's not Crap de Gaulle, but it's Crap to me, that airport, it is, I think it's the second largest airport maybe in the world. I think London's the largest. Yeah, he um, Yeah. And so this airport is huge. Devin and I have a history there where it didn't work out great. I thought I was going to get arrested. Just it was a pain last time. So this time, Knowing that this this time frame in between flights is very condensed, travel agent was like, hey, y'all may want to consider hiring this company and the individual escort you from your one gate to your connection so that you can make it. Like, I think we had 40 minutes, all right, which isn't good. Not at all. No, it sucked. We get off the plane, and her name's Soon. I um, was there with the sign, and I'm like, Hey, what's up? And she's like, you ready? I was like, oh, hold up, hold up. We got like six people. And she's like, okay. And I introduced myself. I'm like, what's your name? You know, she said soon. And I'm like, well, I hope you get us there soon. Typical dad joke. Please tell me you did. She, I did. Oh. She didn't. I don't, she didn't get it. Devin just looked disappointed in me. It was, it was a whole thing. So anyway, all our friends, they get off the plane. There's six of us. And I'm like, all right, soon. Let's roll. We're good. Bro, this woman. She was maybe, maybe five feet tall. Maybe five feet tall. That's being generous, okay? She moved so fast through this airport. Bro, the six of us, we're running. Soon never got to a mild jog. She was walking. And we're all running trying to keep up with this lady. She's making turns. She's cutting here. She's cutting there. 
we get off the train, we got to go through security, right? Because the way this airport's set up, you leave that terminal, you got to go through security again. Not only got to go through security again, then you got to go through customs again. Mind you, I've got, what, 40 minutes, whatever it is. And that's not, and that was 40 minutes, like those doors are closing, like bouncing wheels up, like we're out. So we're just running, trying to keep up with her, right? We have no clue where we're going. Little updates are coming through on the app. She's getting them on her iPad. She's, she's, she's handling it. We're trusting soon to get us there. We come around the corner, and it's security checkpoint, bro. Easily 1,000 people in this line. I mean, there are so many people in this line. And it's one of those deals where it's the stanchions. It's going back and forth. And everybody listening knows what I'm talking about, right? The airport, stanchion, stanchion, stanchion. Everybody's just standing there waiting. We go in the back of the line. I'm like, how in the hell is this helping us get there quicker? We're going in this line. Oh, no. Soon knew what she was doing. She had a plan. She's pushing people out of the way. I'm sitting here thinking I'm about to end up in a fight. But I'm the biggest one in the group. I got this little Chinese woman shoving people. No one's going to go at her crazy. They're just going to punch the big American, right? He's an American asshole. Here we go. She's pushing people. She got to a part of the stanchions. Apparently, she don't push people anymore. She just took the stanchion down. She's like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We're following her. Next thing you know, we have bypassed a 1,000 people in line at security. She's showing her badge at the guy, the security guy. It's not TSA over there. I don't know what it is. But security is like, no, 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 no. She's showing her Planet Fitness ID. I don't know what it is. She's just like, I kept trying to look at it. It didn't seem like anything very important. And so Planet Fitness ID, we'll call it. She's showing it to me. They're like, no, 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 no. He's pointing to the line. She's like, yes, yes, yes. She grabs the six bins. There's six of us. So the bins, you put your stuff in to go through the security. She's dropping him. He's yelling at her. She said something crazy to him. He shut up. I don't know what it was, but we just ignored. We weren't making eye contact with anybody. We're just following soon. We get all our stuff in there. Everybody gets through security, lickety spit. Boom, we're running again. She's still walking, mind you. Brisk walk. We're running. Still don't understand the logistics and, and the how physically this is happening. I think she honestly was floating. She was like levitating and just, zzz, you know, flowing along. We then get to customs easily. Hundreds of people in customs now. Like, here we go. We ain't, there's no way we're making this deal. Mind you, we've always already taken a train. All right. And at the end of this, once we get off this, then we got to get on a bus to get to the actual plane. So there's lots of steps. We've, we've, we've made it through the train. We've made it through security. Now it's just long ass line of customs and the clock is just ticking. Soon, uh uh, Planet Fitness ID in the air. Boom, boom, boom. She's yelling at people and we're just like, screw it. Act like we don't speak English. Just follow her, do whatever. She gets us to the customs, front of the line, cutting everybody. Like, man, this is nice. This is real nice. Get through customs, boom, it's gone. Once all six of us are through, she's levitated. She's just flowing again. We're running bags carry on i mean we look crazy like the old um was it oj commercials you remember you, you're too young for that oj used to be a spokesman for hertz and so oj before you know other stuff uh <laughs> he's running through the airport and he's like jumping over luggage and people and doing like the heisman yeah I've okay. seen, i feel like i've seen the commercials i thought you were about to say he was a sponsor for ford or something I was no like, no sense. no with the new bronco so anyway um <laughs> We're running through this place, and she gets us there with maybe a minute to spare. Soon got us there. If we didn't pay the money for soon, I'd still be sitting at Crap de Gaulle Airport in Paris because there's zero chance that I'd have made that connection. So now we're stuck there. Listen to people talk to me in a language I don't understand about what flight I got to get on or change I got to make or different gate and all this stuff. But instead of dealing with all that mess, we paid this company who sent us the angel soon and she got us to where it was. A few minutes later, we're on the connecting flight, wheels up to Italy. Boom, right where we needed to be. Not all of us, well, in this particular group, um, we were definitely interested in spending the money 
to get that person to help us make that transfer. The expert, the travel agent, highly recommended that we spend the money to hire this person to help us make that transfer. So we were down to do that. So while I'm having a cardiac event running through the airport after the little woman who's just floating on through, I'm laughing and thinking about how many people are unwilling to ensure that this trip, that whether whether you're doing like a, a high-end European trip, you're doing a low-end European trip, middle of the road, it doesn't matter. From a cost standpoint, you are spending a ton of money to go on a vacation in Europe. Just the flights, right? Like it, it's costing you a ton of money to do that. How many people's trips that they've invested a ton of money in are going to get jacked up because they're like, nah, I'm not going to spend this small amount of money to get soon to ensure that I get from point A to point B. So this trip I've invested in gets to where it's supposed to go, right? So I'm thinking about that like, man, how many people don't do that? Because there was nobody else doing that. It was just us. And maybe they had a longer layover, whatever the situation may be, who knows. But I know there's some people there because there were some stressed out people in those lines that their day was going to get exponentially more difficult because they were unwilling to invest in themselves in this trip, whatever it is they're doing, that situation to ensure that it happened. And so I'm laughing about it. We're on the connected flight. I'm thinking about this, still trying to fi figure out physically how this woman never took more than a, a brisk walk and we're all running and sweating, trying to chase her. I'm still trying to figure that part out. But I start thinking more about in business, how people don't do that. And we've talked previously, you know, on the podcast about coaches and the importance of coaches and mentors and things of that nature. But I want to take it a step further. and. All the times where it's it's sitting there right in front of you, what you need to do to, to take it to the next level, to, to move your business forward, to move a music project forward, right? I can only do so much of this on my own. What is it going to take for me to advance? And oftentimes, it's money. because But it's not money the way you think. It's money that you need to invest in. In people, staff, experts. In the travel situation, it was soon. We spent that money on soon so we could get where we're trying to be. To me, that was a no brainer. We absolutely need to do that. Why the hell do I want to spend all this money and get stuck in Paris? Where I don't even like the food they eat there. I'm trying to get to Italy. I don't eat French food. You know what you know about French food? I just have opinions on the French because I'm a history buff. Oh, so I'm going to leave my opinions out of yeah, it. Yeah, I don't do that. But I'll be very honest. One, second time out there, freaking rude. Two, food is trash. So anyway. Well, they don't th like us. I mean. I mean, at me, if you're like a French food person, whatever, I don't care. Yeah. That junk seem nasty. And, and you're not allowed to say any sort of pastry and or bread. Yeah. Something Give us some good food outside of that. <laughs> Thank you, because they gave us some food on the plane. I crushed the croissant. That thing was money. But they threw some other crap on that plane. I'm like, why do you even bring this out? Why would you open this up on an airplane? And I'm looking at the seats, and the people are just freaking crushing this stuff. I'm like, bro, no, because I see my stomach going real bad. One, looks terrible. Two, smells terrible. Three, if that's inside of me, we're going to have issues on this airplane. So I'm not going to do it. Croissant, so keep bringing the, the basket. We're, we're good. But, yes, if you've got a recommendation beyond croissants and pastries, let us know because I, I, I find I'm hard-pressed to, to think of anything. Junk's gross. And service. Service with a smile goes a long way. You don't get service with a smile over there. People are always pissed off about something. I don't know if it's the accent or what, but, like, just pissed off to be pissed off. Drive me nuts. Anyway, spend that money. Make that hire, whether it's a part-time person, maybe it's a full-time person. Maybe it's someone who your business has grown to the extent that, hey, I, I could wing this on my own to get us here, but now to get to that next step, I've got to bring someone who's actually an expert in X, Y, or Z. Um, and it's terrifying. Like, I get it. For the longest time, it was just me. 
doing all parts of the business. And we were growing. We were successful by what people maybe define that as. Uh, people say, hey, business is going well, whatever. But it was not until we started investing in people and growing the team. It was not until two years, three years that you're talking about doing a podcast to where it's like, all right, I'm gonna pay Jonathan to help get this thing going. Then we're actually doing it. Like, cause it just wasn't gonna happen. And you can't get where you say you're trying to go. If you're unwilling to make the sacrifices to get you there. And a simple sacrifice was with soon at that airport to make sure we got where we wanted to be we, next door in the offices. We got people sitting all over the dang place doing different things. You've been over here a couple hours today, working on projects and doing stuff like there's people all over the place doing things and all of our collective efforts together are getting us to where we've got to go. Does not mean it's without challenges does not mean it's not terrifying. Trust me, payroll every two weeks is terrifying to me. It's craziness, but that's just, it's a part of the deal. It's, it's, it's part of it. If, if where I believe the path that we're on and where I believe that path is taking us, it's part of that process if we want to get there. And so for those of you listening today, where you're, you're putting all this effort, you're making all this sacrifice personally and sacrificing time with your family and friends and, and other things that you care about, but you're unwilling to sacrifice financially, you know, take out of pocket a little bit in order to bring someone in that can help you. You got you to gotta kind of rewire your mind around this a little bit and not think about what it does to you financially short term you need to think about what it does financially to you long term by not bringing in that help and making that higher you know if you're a $100,000 a year business and you know you're unwilling to hire somebody part time 10 grand a year you know, you're like I, I i just can't do that but you you haven't already done the math and looked at the value they're going to add you know, giving you 10 hours a week of, of extra margin, you got to be able to figure out and plan and equate. What does that 10 hours a week do? Well, that extra 500 hours a year, right? Is that right? Yeah. 500 hours a year, 10 hours a week, 50 weeks in a year. Uh, a little bit, a little bit more. Well, yeah, I figured they don't work every week. So, yeah, you know, so let's say 500 hours a year of time focused on your business and either something that you're lacking or something that could help you to um, improve something that is a revenue generating task for you. There's going to be a multiplying effect to your business. And rather than looking at it, it's like, well, you know, we're a hundred thousand dollars a year. I'm going to spend 10 grand, you know, on this part-time person, you know, now that that's coming out of my pocket. Oh, okay. Maybe it is coming out of your pocket. But can you realistically look at what that ten thousand a year investment is going to produce? Because for me personally, if I know that a ten thousand dollar a year expense is going to generate twelve thousand dollars a year in income, I'm going to take the ten thousand dollar expense, unless it's a ten thousand dollar worth of headache that comes with it too. Because now we need to be a little higher. Now that ten thousand needs to be creating about twenty, right? But you, that's, again, I come back to, you got to know the numbers of your business. You got to know what each move equates to and stop thinking about, oh, well, I can't afford it. Can you afford not to? And if you don't know the answer to that question, I challenge you, I beg you, get in your numbers and figure it out. Because the quickest path to getting where you say you want to be is getting out of your way, your own way, and getting help. That's the quickest way there. And it's going to cost you. You're going to have to invest. The funny thing about good investments, though, it might not be right away. It may not be as quick as you like. But the funny thing with good investments, they do pay off. So get into your numbers. And I beg you, know them. And figure out what that next step is. What can you, who can you invest in? What position do you need to add to your business where you need to have another body helping you out, right? That can help catapult you 
to where you're supposed to be in the next 60, 90, 120 days, 12 months from now, two, three, four, five years from now. Think about those things. Take a look. Holler at me if you got questions. I push you. Hire, hire soon. Make sure you get where you're trying to go. Don't get stuck at Crap the Gall in Paris. We'll see you all next time on the Big Dog Podcast.